Hello and a warm welcome to Talking Stocks. I'm Kukule Tutele. With me in studio is Sean Ashton and Henry Biddlecombe, both from Anchor Capital. And today we're talking a stock that many South Africans and people across the globe have probably interacted with. Facebook. Let's get more details on this particular company. I think many of us just know it as a social media platform, owns Instagram and trying to implement uh, money transfers as well as advertising. But uh, have they grown substantially to being more than just a social media platform? So I think it is still very much that. It's the world's largest social media platform. Um, 1.65 billion users globally and growing at 45 to 50 million users per quarter. So that's 15% annualized. Sure. And what do we like about this thing? I think the, the, the first point to make is that um, you've got classic network effects here in the sense that uh, the value of any social network or any network uh, in general is, uh, and especially as it applies to social media, um, is the extent of other user engagement. Uh, so if you think about an online classified business, uh, which uh, Naspers might own, the extent to which you've got other users engaged in that platform and selling their product makes the overall platform more valuable to other users. So the fact that Facebook is the biggest probably means that it stays the biggest and gets bigger. Um, and, and we've certainly seen this. Um, so, and I think the other important point to make is that in their business model, uh, it's not like a traditional media company which is purchasing expensive content like sports rights. Um, they, they don't have to pay for the content that gets put onto their platform, uh -huh. um, which, we, which means that as, as advertisers become more and more interested in this database of users that they've got in terms of targeting them for, for ads, um, you would expect to see scale in the margins, and the margins are already p very, very high in this business. Is this the competitive advantage that it has over what LinkedIn, perhaps, which was recently bought by what uh, Microsoft? Uh, sure, absolutely, and I guess it's about scale, right? So they've, they've got a much larger user base. And for us, we, we actually compare it closely, more, more closely to something like Google. So if you think about the, and that's the, you know, the alphabet listed business, now, if you think about how these two businesses compare, you've got Google, which is predominantly search. And we know that search, in terms of advertising, has become the biggest share of online advertising. Now, if you look at the overall media landscape, over the last 10 years, you've had a massive shift away from print media towards online, and mm -hmm. particularly search. So, about one-third of global advertising spend is now online. Um, and of that, the majority would be, would, would be search, in terms of the largest component. Um, to give you some idea, the global advertising industry outside of China is about $450 billion in size. Um, about $130 billion is, uh, is online in nature. And of that, Google captures about $75 billion. So they're very big in that space, and it's predominantly search. Um, but social media, as an example, is very, very fast growing, but still only 16% uh, of online advertising. Sure. Now, to contrast the user bases, you've got um, 1.1 billion users uh, of, of search on Google, um, but you've got 1.65 billion users on Facebook. We know that Google generates revenues of $75 billion a year and Facebook about 17. So you, you on, a, on a per user basis, you're looking at about $16 for Facebook per year and about $64 for, for, for Google. And what we are saying is that we think that that pie has the potential to shift far more in favor of uh, social media, which would favor Facebook over time. Mm -hmm. Henry, you agree, uh, so clearly there's an opportunity in uh, the online advertising space. How su significant is it, and uh, perhaps uh, walking through some of the, the graphs that we do have on display as well, which uh, shows uh, uh, how significant the opportunity exists here? Well, you know, just to add to what Sean said, I mean, it's not just about user count um, and about the percentage of online advertising spend that Facebook <coughs> ultimately enjoy, but it's also about the amount of time that they hook their users for on a daily basis. Um, because ultimately that's how they, they, they monetize their users. And that's actually grown by a, f a phenomenal amount. Um, I think three years ago, the average Facebook user was spending about 20 minutes a day browsing Facebook, and today that's up to 50 minutes. Now, if we just put that into context, you know, one day is 24 hours long. Now you're sleeping for hopefully at least eight hours a day, mm -hmm. leaving 16 hours a day for the rest. So you're spending one sixteenth of your day Jeez. on Facebook. And, and, you know, it's, it's very difficult to put a value to that. And, and I suppose that's what we try to do. But what it does mean is that you've got a very captive user base um, that you can start to monetize in all sorts of ways. Yes, um, today the, the, the primary way to monetize that is through um, ad spend. Um, but, but, you know, you, you'd have to believe that that user base becomes more and more valuable mm. um, uh, with more amount of time that they spend on the site. And the point to make is that you know, Facebook knows more about those people 
than any other company on planet Earth in terms of that you know, 1.65 billion users. And you've got quite a lot of information about those people in terms sure. of what they've told you about their profile, what they tend to like when they click on pages. You know, it's a very, very rich data set for which uh, other corporates can actually you know, display targeted advertising. Mm -hmm. So I think that pie almost inevitably has to grow. Mm. What about uh, the margins? Uh, obviously quite a strong business here, but has that uh, trend changed significantly over the last three years? So, I mean, it's been trending upwards. Um, though obviously, it's not in a straight line, but, you know, on an adjusted basis, which adds back the non-cash charges for share-based payments, which is an IFRS uh, accounting rule, um, they generate an operating margin of about 55%, uh, which is very high if you compare it to something like Google. But, if, again, consider the fact that... Uh, uh, and, and traditional media companies consider the fact that they don't actually purchase any content. Their costs really are research and development, the overheads for running the company and, uh, um, and, and some servers that they have to purchase. That's ultimately what their expenses are. They're not paying for rights. Um, so as, as you would expect um, advertising revenue to grow, and if we model out these guys retaining their 80% share of the overall social media advertising pool, we think that that pool is going to grow by very close to 30% a year for quite some time. Sure. Um, it's, it'd be quite hard for them not to have some margin leverage um, if that's the case, if they capture all, all of that incremental revenue growth. Um, so, so we would expect to see margins going up of the order of one and a half to possibly even as high as 2% per annum, um, often a really very high base. And that means very, very strong cash flows for this company. Um, which, which comes through in, in our valuation. Mm. Keeping with the evaluation theme, though, before we get there, um, the balance sheet as well as, uh, I understand, quite good, well, heavy here, and return on capital, uh, which is employed. Uh, how are the dynamics looking at the moment? Well, if you look at return on equity, it, it seems fairly low at around 14%. But what you have to do is, is you have to look at the balance sheet and understand that there's, there's a large portion of cash and goodwill sitting on the balance sheet. So once you adjust for that, and you start looking at the return on capital employed, you, you, you come up with a, an ROCE number of, of 40%. So the business is actually very efficient and they're earning very high returns uh, on the capital that they invest. And that kind of underpins our growth forecasts of, of around 30% uh, per annum going forward. In comparison to Google, how does this fare, or Alphabet? It's, it's, it's quite significantly higher. Um, and, if you, and if you look at an uh, important point to make here, so that, that 38 or 40% return on capital employed that includes the goodwill, okay? So all we've done there is we've stripped out the cash from the balance sheet and we're assessing operating profit, you know, kind of non-GAAP operating profit against that number. And that gets you to the 38%. So, um, so the goodwill, the goodwill's in that figure for which, you know, they paid you know, these typical billion dollar type of tickets for things like WhatsApp and, uh, and Instagram and the like. So the extent to which they can monetize those assets going forward, we think the underlying return is actually significantly higher than that if, if they can create a much more scalable base. So, so I think just to, to summarize on the valuation, the way we've thought about this company is that it trades, it trades at a forward 30 times P multiple. Um, this compares to Alphabet, which is a forward 20, so 50% premium. Mm. Um, but we think that the consensus for Alphabet could well be a little bit too aggressive. People are looking for about 15% profit growth over the next little while, which has been what they've been delivering. But the point to make is that they already have a very high market share um, in what is already quite a big chunk of the advertising industry online. Um, so we think market share starts to shift to social media more in increasingly. And there, there's a risk um, that you know, the advertising industry globally is almost a zero-sum game. It's not growing very quickly. It's growing at 2.5% per annum. As a share of GDP, it's actually been falling. Um, so, so the risk is that Google starts to trend towards um, a growth rate closer to that of the industry. We're not saying 25 but it could well be 10 um, And then something like Facebook, we think, can grow at 25 to 30% for, for at least the next five years is our forecast horizon. Now, so we, so we valued it on, on a discounted cash flow basis, taking into account this above average growth rate. Um, and we're getting to a number of circa $150 per share, which is about 25% upside from, from where we sit today. And, and another way of thinking about that valuation is that, you know, yes, you're paying a 50% premium to Google, um, but if you're growing at three times the pace as Google is growing, within five years, your PE multiple is the same. And you've probably still got a business that's growing faster. Mm -hmm. Well, let's uh, find out now from our experts whether to buy, hold or sell Facebook. Henry, your views, uh, buy, hold or sell Facebook? 
So for me, Facebook's a buy. Um, although it's trading on a fairly demanding forward multiple of 30, you know, as Sean's pointed out, with 30% earnings growth going forward, that multiple un unwinds quite quickly. Um, and you know, again, I think it has to do with base effects, where you've got a company like Google, which is making annual net income of around $16.5 billion. Facebook are coming, on a uh, coming with off with a base of just 3.5. You know, so it's a lot easier for them to grow a, a lot quicker as well. And this isn't a one-dimensional business. You know, it's not just about advertising um, a revenue, but they're also investing in other areas as well, which, which may prove it to be some form of optionality in the share price. Exactly, but yeah. he's putting that cash to some good use for the moment. Sean, your views? Yeah, I would largely mirror that. For me, it's a buy. I think just on, just on the basis of what they can do with, with ad spend in the, in the social media space, there's value to be seen. Um, but also, you know, the, this is not a company that's paying a dividend or buying back shares at this point in time. Uh, and we think it's a business that will generate close to 13, 12 to $13 billion worth of free cash flow next year. You know, that buys you a lot of optionality. If mm. you've got smart people and smart engineers working for you, um, there's things you can do with that money. So, so I think we, uh, certainly for me, it's a buy. I see 25% upside. I think it's worthwhile touching on the risks. And the risks, to my mind, would be, would largely stem from the type of business model it is. So because it's not your own content that, that you're utilizing to generate a return, it's other user content, um, you, you know, the, reputationally, there's, uh, there's probably going to be some issues to come with um, the extent of inappropriate material that gets uploaded to their platform. Mm. How do they control that? Um, you've seen a lawsuit where, where people are you know, tr trying to sue them for a billion dollars for, for the fact that some users signed up and, and used it as a terrorist planning uh, platform. Sure. Um, so th those are the sorts of issues that I would see are, are risks posing, uh, posing the business. But again... You've got smart individuals involved there. You've got a lot of money. They should find a way to, uh, to, to achieve solutions to these issues. Mm. Well, we'll have to leave it there for today, but clearly a buy recommendation coming through from our guests when it comes to Facebook. So in conclusion, it's a like, as you <laughs> see on screen. Well, that's where we leave it. A big thank you once more to Sean Ashton and Henry Biddlecombe for joining us today, both from Anchor Capital. Join us next time where we talk more stocks.